a lot of people don't think that we're considered like a medical school program, which is a misconception. A lot of people don't know that we do surgery, which for sure is a misconception because in order to practice, you can't just do four years of podiatric medical school and then practice. You have to do three year surgical residency and then get board qualified to even practice. So uh, I stumbled upon podiatry, and, and before then, I really thought podiatry was a more of a chiropodist thing where they just looked at feet, took care of day-to-day -day stuff. Um, come to find out that they did everything below the knee, really, surgically, uh, treating-wise, injury-wise. And uh, I told myself, why not? Why not just specialize from the start? Instead of taking that chance and going that route, I, can, I know my field from where it begins. And not only that, but I'm a specialist in it. I got the biggest misconception is that podiatrists aren't as knowledgeable about certain things as the DO and MD counterparts, um, which is not true. Um, we do the right. same. We have the same uh, courses for the first two years of uh, medical school. And then on our third year, we branch out and do more things tailored towards the foot and ankle. So we'll have a second anatomy course and we'll have other surgical courses, whereas your other MDDO counterpoints will have more specific courses towards the other specialties, like if you want to be an OBGYN or if you want to do emergency, they all have more of those kind of rotations where our rotations are very specific. So Got that's it. pretty much the, the only difference. Our first two years of training are essentially the same. And then the last two years, we specifically focus on the foot and I think that there are any misconceptions out there about what podiatrists do that we yes. confuse students? Yes, very much so. Um, I think that it depends who you ask, but I think there are people that just have no idea what we do. And mm -hmm. then there are people that think that all we do is ingrown toenails and warts, which is some of what we do, but it's not all of what we do. Um, I think there are sort of old school doctors that don't realize that we can do everything in the foot. So I do, I do everything. I mean, whatever, whatever comes in, if it's, um, if it's a fracture, if it's a, you know, if it's a deformity, I, I handle little kids, I handle wounds. I handle anything that comes in. So, but there's a misconception that uh, if it's a wound, it should go to a vascular surgeon. If it's a skin issue, it should go to a dermatologist. If it's, um, you know, if it's something that needs surgery, then it should go to an orthopedic surgeon. At, the, at one time, that was the case, and there were things that were referred out. But I, I refer out things that I think that would be best handled by someone who specializes in that area. For instance, if I have a skin issue that I think is a little more serious, I might hand, I might refer it to a dermatologist. But we have a good give and take, and they have sure. stuff that's to me. Um, so, I, you know, I, I always tell referring physicians, send me anything on the foot. If I can't handle it, I'll send it out. And I'll I honestly handle something that I think I'm skilled at and something that I, I lack the skill set. I'm, I'm happy to send out and I'm happy to collaborate with others. Um, but at this point, we are as well trained in the foot as anybody else that's handling anything on the foot, any system of the foot. And, uh, and the residency programs are, are far better. The training is, is much better even than when I got out. It's standardized and it's it's good. And the, the students that are graduating today are, or the residents rather that are graduating today are, are very well trained and they're knowledgeable and they're hungry mm -hmm. and they're good at what they do and they, and they like it. There's a big misconception. And, and even with um, patients of mine that I've actively been treating um, just last week, I had a patient tell me that he was glad that he came to me instead of a podiatrist. And he <laughs> had previously admitted um, that he was a retired dentist. And so... Okay. You know, we kind of have this assumption that other people within the medical community would be aware of what others do in their training and all of that. But because I work with an orthopedic group, he assumed that I was an orthopedic surgeon. Um, but podiatry as a profession has changed significantly in the last 10 years. And okay. so there are many podiatrists that are still practicing and still have great practices and, and all of that that have very different training from someone who would be completing residency today. Uh, there are many podiatrists who may have only had to do one year of residency or two years of residency. Um, they may not have had surgical training, which is now a requirement. And so there is right. a lot of variety. Um, but fortunately, the profession has moved to a standardized three-year residency now. Everyone is surgical trained. Uh, everyone kind of has that same baseline of training. Whether they choose to be surgical in practice or not can vary. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a, a tall task to continue to educate the public, uh, right. educate the medical community. Um, you may have heard the VA only recently started acknowledging that yes. podiatry is a physician and not um, something less than. And so there's a lot of work to do. Uh, the podiatry profession has progressed and advanced at a much faster rate than even physicians have recognized. 
So not only does the general public have misconceptions about what podiatry is or what podiatrists are actually capable of doing, even some healthcare professionals don't entirely understand what our education consists of, how comprehensive our residency training is, and what our scope of practice is. Uh, There are some podiatry students that actually share the same classroom as medical students. And as of 2013, all residency programs have to be three years in length. In my residency program, we did rotations along the internal medicine residents. And with respect to our specific podiatry training, we're trained to treat deformities and pathologies of the foot and ankle, as well as doing rotations outside of that even. Um, but they include both non-operative and surgical treatment options. So even though previous generations of podiatrists uh, maybe weren't even residency trained and did palliative care, now they're getting at least three years of surgical training in the foot and ankle and doing full reconstructive procedures to correct really severe foot and ankle deformities. Now I'd say the first thing is everybody says, oh, you like kids? Everybody yeah. thinks we're pediatricians. So. Yeah, people misunderstand. And then um, a lot of people are like, oh, you just cut toenails. So that's a, a big one. Um, and even when I went into school, I didn't think I was going to be like a big surgeon. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I, when I was in my residency, then I like got all excited about surgery and, you know, doing all these crazy ankle fractures and forefoot reconstructions. Um, and it is exciting, but I don't think that you or most people go into podiatry thinking they're going to be like this big surgeon. Um, at least I didn't. So um, I think that's definitely a misconception. And we even found, I mean, in the hospital setting in residency uh, with misconceptions with orthopedics versus podiatry, they would say, oh, it's a fracture that came in our sports industry. It needs to go to ortho. We're like, we can do that. We're just as qualified as them. We did residency. And so there is definitely a misconception with that. And we find that when we're going to meet um, primary care doctors. They're like, oh, I send all my flat feet or all my such and such patients to the orthopedic down the street. And I was like, why don't you send it to us? And they're like, we didn't know you went to school for that. So. Yeah, most people... I think don't know the the full extent of what podiatrists do or can do. Well, there is a lot of misconceptions. First off, we don't. I I could just say I've been in residency since 2016. I've only clipped four or five patients' nails. Okay. So that right there lets you know like what we're like the professions kind of evolved from what initially it was, which mm-hmm. was chiropractic, which is pretty much the palliative care of the foot. But we still do that. That's still important, especially for our diabetic patients. But um, that and now, I mean, it depends on the state you practice in, like in Florida, where I'm doing my residency out in South Florida. Um, our privileges is, is from for soft tissue procedures from the pretty much from the toes up to the hip. So there's actually some docs that do wound care of like the sacrum, which is like so, which is actually pretty rare, but especially dependent on for podiatry and um, for bone for bony procedure, orthopedic procedures, we're allowed to do up to the tibia, tibia tuberosity. So. That's why a lot of people like to distinctly say, you know, they're foot, ankle, and leg surgeons. Out here, that's what technically they are. I mean, there's other places I've been interviewing for jobs where all the podiatrists get to do is uh, foot care, not even the ankle, whether it's a soft tissue mass on the ankle or anything. So that's one of the things, misconceptions, is look at that state scope of practice. Florida has a really good one. Texas has a really good one. Michigan. I mean, a lot of states are starting to gear towards it. I know some pods that even, out, depending on where they're at, if they're in a rural area, they administer their own anesthesia because they have to. They don't have an anesthesiologist on call at the places. You definitely a podi- like uh, yeah. You're definitely a podiatric physician or a podiatric surgeon. I mean, it's yeah. I don't even like some states don't even call it podiatry. And it's basically foot and ankle. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it is what it is. I mean, a lot of people don't like it, but that's the way it is. The, the profession's evolving, and yeah. it's definitely worth investment. So it's worth it.